OpenAI just recently announced the availability of fine-tuning with some of their latest models like GPT-40 and GPT-40 Mini. In this video, we're going to go through the main points of the announcements and then jump into a full demo of how to fine tune with these GPT-40 models. If you already read the announcement, you can jump straight into the demo part. I will be posting the timestamps for the video. But before we get started, consider leaving a like and subscribe to the channel. This really helps the channel and allows me to keep doing these videos for you, which a lot of you are already finding very useful. So there are a couple of main points about this announcement. They now are making it available for us to fine tune with the GPT-40 models. And specifically, they mention that they have GPT-40 2024-0806. So that checkpoint is available to fine tune using the fine tuning dashboard, which is what we will use for our demo. This GPT-40 fine tuning training costs $25 per million tokens. And the inference is 375 per million input tokens and $15 per million output tokens. And this is only available to other developers on paid usage tiers. Also, at the top of this announcement, they mentioned that they are offering 1 million training tokens per day for free for every organization through September 23rd. So I think this is a really good opportunity to make use of these free resources to experiment with these models for your use cases. And you may wonder, what are the use cases for which I may use fine tuning? In fact, they mention it here, fine tuning enables the model to customize structure and tone of responses or to follow complex domain specific instructions. So these are some of the use cases where you would use fine tuning, but there are other specific niche use cases where you can also take advantage of the fine tuning capabilities of these models. And we are going to demonstrate one of those use cases in our demo in a bit. You can also see here that for GPT-40 Mini, this particular checkpoint, they are offering 2 million training tokens per day for free through September 23rd. So we roughly have about a month to just use these free resources. As a developer, it's important to ask yourself whether such features or opportunities make sense to apply. So right now with LLMs, I think it's important to experiment a lot, okay? So the reason why these companies are offering a lot of these free resources is that there might be a very unique way in how you can apply these fine-tuning features. And I think that's what they want to encourage here. And in fact, what they have done is work with a couple of partners to test how far these fine-tuning features can go. And recently, we actually did a summary of one of those partners and one of their announcements. Specifically, it was this Genie model, which is an AI software engineering assistant that was able to get state-of-the-art performance on the difficult SWE benchmark. And here what they're showing is the SWE benchmark, which is the verified version, which is something that also OpenAI worked on recently. They obtained 43.8%, but essentially it is this software engineering AI assistant that was trained on very complex reasoning data sets. So they were able to fine tune a GPT-40 model, model trained on examples of real software engineers at work. And that consisted of, again, very complex reasoning data sets that simulate the process of a real software engineer and how they solve problems. So those are the details for the announcement. Now I'm going to jump into the demo itself. Yes. I've actually done a fine tuning of GPT-40 Mini on one of our popular data sets that the community uses. And so I'm not going to fine tune that in the video itself. What I'm going to do is show you the whole process. The reason I'm doing this is because to fine tune, it will take some time. I think it takes up to 15 minutes on my specific data set. So I won't be able to do it in the recording itself, but I'll show you the results. I'll show you the process. So you have a good idea. And if you're interested in replicating, I will also provide the links to the data sets that I'm using. So this use case is basically the use case of emotion classification. So I can use a large language model to fine tune it to specifically do classification of text. And the classification labels will be emotions. To show you how this looks, I will show you now a data set that I will use. So this data set is already in JSON-L format. 
And this is the emotion training data set. And you can see that I need to format it like this. So for every line, there's going to be messages, there's going to be a system role, and there's going to be the content for the system role, which is your task is to classify a piece of text into following emotion labels. So all these emotion labels. And then I give it another role, which is user. And then the content for that is the specific text examples. And after that, I also have the assistant role with the label or a classification for this particular text. So I have a bunch of these, as you will see here. And I also have a validation data set for this because this is something that you can provide in the fine tuning interface. And I'll show you that in a bit. So those data sets are already formatted for you. So you don't need to format. All you need to do is just upload it to the fine tuning interface. And that's what I'm about to show you. The first thing you need to do here is go to the fine tuning interface, which you can find under platform.openai.com. You will need to go to dashboard and it will show you fine tuning here on the left. Then what you can do is you can create and under create, you can select the model. As I mentioned earlier, you have GPT-40 2024-0806, and then you also have this mini model. So both of these are available for fine tuning now. Previously, you could only fine tune on these models. So what I'll do is I'll just choose mini to show you the example. And then here I select a training data set. Now, because I've done fine tuning with these models before, I can actually select an existing data set and it asks me for a file ID. And I actually have a file ID because I've stored this data set before and I've done already fine tuning with these data sets. So you can browse files and you can find those data sets. You can find the file ID and then you can paste it here. And the same thing for validation data set, you can paste it as well here. Optionally, what you can do is you can upload the file as well. You can just drag it here. See, it's asking you for this format. And the same thing here, you can just upload it again. Validation data is optional. You don't need to include it, I believe. And so you can just click none here. You give it a suffix, just give it a name so that you can identify that model afterwards. You can set a random seed if you want, or, or you can just set a specific seed. You can also configure hyperparameters, which I really like because you know this controls for how long this experiment is gonna take. So you can choose the number of epochs, for example, and you can choose the number of batch size. This also affects the performance of the final fine-tuned model as well. You can learn more about fine-tuning here by clicking on this button. But once you have set all of these things, what you can do now is just create. So it's a very simple process. Yeah, and once you hit create, then it starts to run. On the right-hand side, you will see that it shows verifying training data sets. So it will go through a process of verifying whether your training data sets are in the right format. If you're using my example, you don't need to worry because it has already been validated and it's in the right format. And for my example, you can see that it used 100,000 training tokens. So that's a lot of tokens. And you can see here the different status messages that it shows while going through this fine tuning process. Once it completes the process, it also gives you some sort of metrics. So you can see what the full validation loss is or training loss. I won't explain what the loss are in this video. I, I think it's a bit out of scope, but I might do another video if there is a lot of interest for this so that we can go into the theory and what these metrics mean. And finally, what I can do here is I can go to the playground and test this model. And this is exactly what I'm gonna do now. So I'm gonna click here, playground, and just like with any other model that you can use in the playground, you can also use the fine tune model. So you can see it's already selected for me here. I am not interested in comparing. If you want to compare, you can leave the interface like this, but I'm just going to close this one and then just experiment with this particular model. Now, I have used a system instruction, so I want to use the system instruction again. Now I'll show you here the process. I'm going to copy this specific system instruction, which I'm repeating, and then go to the playground, and then I'm going to paste that here. And this, again, provides additional context for the model to be able to perform the task properly. Now I can give it some input message. In this case, I'm just going to give it a piece of text. I'm going to hit run. And you can see it classified this particular text into love. And I can keep trying. Very curious about this one. I'm feeling overwhelmed today. It classified a surprise. This could be subjective. I think it could be like sad or it could be also surprised. It really depends on the context. So this is a hard problem because this is probably not enough information. I'm gonna try one more here. So this is a longer text and it classified it as joy. So this works great. Now the next step after this would be to basically run this via your API 
this model is available via the API, and you know you can set up a script to do some more systematic evaluation on this fine-tuned model. And I have done those type of experiments before, and from experience and from the results that I've seen before, fine-tuning these models on this particular data set significantly enhances the performance. The performance is enhanced by approximately 100% with some of these models. This is how powerful it is to fine-tune models on some of these specific use cases. In my case, I wasn't focusing on style and so forth. I was focusing more on the classification of the text, which might seem like a very simple task, but it is actually a very difficult task. That's it for this video. I will link the data sets below so you can go and test it out on your own. If you have questions about this particular demo or the data sets, please leave a comment below and I'll be happy to reach out and provide more information about that. That's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all on the next one.